So what is dyskinesia? So we're going to talk from what is dyskinesia and then work our way down from there. If we look at dyskinesia, all the term dyskinesia means is that it's abnormal movements. It's what is called a hyperkinetic movement disorder. If I were to create a textbook on movement disorders, the first page of it would be, let's divide up movement disorders into something that's hypokinetic, when you, meaning you move less than you should, and hyperkinetic, when you see more movement than you should. So dyskinesia is a hyperkinetic movement disorder. It is an umbrella term. It is an umbrella term that says it's just abnormal movements, and you can subclassify and break this down as much as you'd like, or you can be a splitter in that sense, or you can be a lumper, and you can lump in all abnormal movements into one group. So abnormal involuntary movements. Let's first divide up involuntary movements into what is called rhythmic and non-rhythmic. Rhythmic means because it has a rhythm to it, you can predict what it's going to look like. So if you can see my hand, this is rhythmic. You can see what it would look like. You can see the frequency of it, the amplitude of it. It may change a little bit, but it is pretty rhythmic that I'm showing you. Non-rhythmic is something that moves around in unpredictable patterns. You don't know how I'm going to move. I'm kind of moving around. I may move one this way in different directions, but it's non-rhythmic. It takes a few seconds to look at that movement, and you kind of have to just focus in on that movement to see is it rhythmic or non-rhythmic. If it's rhythmic, it's more tremulous. It's called tremors. That's where we want to differentiate it. And we want to treat tremors separately. And the thing about hyperkinetic movement disorder is that our eyes get drawn right to it because it's something that shouldn't be there. You shouldn't be having these movements, and suddenly you are. You're drawn to it. And so sometimes it's helpful for us to look at different movements and look, not look at others. You don't want to be distracted by things. If you look at non-rhythmic, we divide non-rhythmic into sustained, slow, or rapid. So let me show you a sustained non-rhythmic movement. It's somebody who's doing this. Who's, you can see the dystonic posturing of the neck or the dystonic posturing of my arm here. That's sustained. Somebody who's slow, it goes from very little movement on sustained to slow, which has more movement, which would be somebody like this who's trying to pick up a pencil or pick up a glass, and they're kind of, it's wormy, it's twisting movements, which is athetosis. Sustained is dystonia. So you can see the movements. It's what's called phenomenology of movement disorders. You can see the sustained movements versus more slow movements. And movements don't have to fall into these neat categories. And that's one of the messages I have today, is that we like to be able to split these movements very nicely. It's helpful, but it's also not to get focused on this. You can have dystonia with athetoid movements. You can have chorea with athetoid movements. So if it's rapid, it's much more fluid. It looks like something's moving around. I got a great video, which I can't share with you guys, yesterday from another neurologist who showed me this video. And the lady clearly had chorea form movement. She's talking to someone. And this is what she's doing. As she's writing her name, you can see the rest of her body is kind of just shimmying along very nicely. It's not rhythmic. You don't know what's going to move. As she changes her movements, the movements change. The first question I asked her, is there an urge for this lady to do this? She said, no. Can she suppress it? She said, no. If it's non-suppressible, it's chorea in that sense.